A big hello to all of you watching, wherever you are, wherever you are in the world, you're tuning in from, you are all very, very welcome. Uh, we're delighted that Sharon Walia is, is leading this masterclass today. Sharon is a Nottingham-based filmmaker and writer committed to covering social justice topics. Sharon's first feature film, The Movement, follows the everyday heroes saving refugees on land, at sea and from air. The film received a theatrical release in 2018 and aired on television in 2021. You can now watch the film on Amazon Prime. Before I hand over to Sharon, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how our event will be structured today. Um, we have the festival team here working behind the scenes. My colleague Elle is running the Q&A box and Harry is running the chat box, so do say hi. Um, if you do decide to use the chat box, we ask you to please be respectful of our guests today uh, and to each other as well. Uh, please don't use offensive language or share any personal information. Our code of conduct can be found in the ticketing email you received via Eventbrite. Uh, Harry is going to drop, if he hasn't already, uh, the link to our Facebook networking group to the chat box. If you'd like to network with, with each other after the event, uh, please do feel free to do so uh, and join that group and collaborate there. Uh, if you'd like to ask Sharon a question, uh, please use the Q&A box. We have 10 minutes at the end dedicated to these and we'll get through as many as we can. Uh, a final note that this event is being recorded and we put up on the BFI YouTube channel later this week. That's all from me. I'm going to now hand it to Sharon. Uh, enjoy the event, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, really excited to do this masterclass. Um, I was actually at the festival a few years ago and it is one of my favourite festivals. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, I'm just going to quickly um, go over what I'll be covering in this session and then talk a little bit about me. So um, just to start me with the, uh, the first slide, um, I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about me and my journey, how I became a filmmaker. And I like to share this because my journey to becoming an independent filmmaker isn't very straightforward. It's not very linear. I didn't go to film school or anything like that. So I'm gonna share my story. And then I'm gonna talk briefly about what are some of the barriers for independent filmmakers, emerging filmmakers, and those who are more regional based. Um, how I overcame those barriers and, and hopefully some tips so you can too. Um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about how I came up with the idea for my first film, show you a clip from the trailer, just so you get a bit of an idea of what I like to focus on. And then I'm going to share some tips and advice for funding, uh, funding for emerging filmmakers. Um, some of this will be documentary focused, but I'm also going to fo focus on um, narrative and fiction as well. Um, I'm going to share my camera kit, uh, preparing to shoot, just some practical advice, which I think is always handy. Um, some editing tips, um, and then I'll show you another clip from a trailer. I'll speak about how to convey your message. This is more for documentary and how to get the best out of your characters. Um, and then obviously the important bit, which is getting your film um, out there, uh, talking to producers, distributors, networking and promotion. Uh, and then I'm gonna speak, uh, this is more going off documentary and talk a bit about my script writing and how I secured an agent. Um, and then how to pitch to stations. I'll show you a couple of example emails and um, some tips for motivation, because we all know this is quite a tough industry. Um, and then I'm going to share some information on funders, regional hubs, a bit about the BFI Academy. And then I'll show you a bit of uh, a trailer for my, my new film and how I got distribution. And yeah, and then I'll take any questions. So um, yeah, the next slide is just a li little bit about me. I'm just going to keep this very, very brief. But um, after completing my, uh, my first um, degree, I became a refugee caseworker. So um, I worked with resettling refugees in Nottingham. Um, but I was always, always interested in the media, um, documentary and writing. And I just realised that uh, a lot of the refugee stories a good few years ago now weren't being covered or weren't being covered in a certain way. So I decided to um, go part time at my job and I did a master's in broadcast journalism. Um, at this point, I never really, I used to film when I was kind of young and do like short films, but I'd never edited before. But I always had this inspiration and this drive to cover certain stories and there'll be more about that coming up shortly. I, I finished my MA and then I um, went on to, um, to do some freelance work. Um, and then I finally secured a, a local news a television reporting role. And I did that for about four years. And then it wasn't long after what was happening in Syria um, and the um, kind of the ISIS takeover. Um, I decided to make um, reporting on the refugee and asylum seekers and migration my niche. 
I'm going to speak a little bit about finding your niche, but it's not important. It's just something that I was passionate about. And then um, I did an investigative um, report for the BBC. And then um, I decided to take a bit of a gamble and um, leave my job um, and make a feature documentary. So that's just a bit about me. Um, and now I'm going to speak about um, briefly about some of the challenges regional and emerging filmmakers. So what are some of the challenges um, for us for emerging filmmakers? Well, the first thing um, is the obvious one, which is location. Now, this isn't going to be like a doom and gloom presentation like, oh, it's so tough for people who are regional and you'll never get there. There's actually things are improving year on year, thankfully. Um, but, uh, you know, as we do know, a lot of production houses, a lot of agents are, you know, normally based in the capital. And it is quite hard to network in person. But obviously, with what we went through with the pandemic, a lot of that is changing as well. Um, there's class. It's expensive to move to another city, um, especially London, you know, Manchester. Lack of networking opportunities, um, especially in-person opportunities. Um, not having an agent or a producer, this is what I call the vicious cycle. Some of you might have already gone through this, but you go to a production company or a production house, um, kind of show them your pitch, show them your script. And, oh no, you don't accept um, unsolicited material. You need to go through it to an agent. You go to an agent and you get, no, we only have people on recommendation. So you kind of get this circle. It's like, how do I actually get into this industry? Um, so um, hopefully with my story, I'll show you, um, you know, some tips about how you can speak to producers and how you can get an agent, even if you're regionally based and quite emerging. Um, and then there's other barriers, for example, people from ethnic uh, minority backgrounds, like accessibility, people with um, physical disabilities, mental health issues, and people from LGBTQ backgrounds. Um, myself, when I started out as a reporter, I kind of felt someone from an ethnic background. And being a woman in my newsroom, it did take a while before I was even offered um, the chance to go out and do a top story. Um, I felt like I had to prove myself more. So I think there are some like hidden um, barriers and maybe some you know unconscious barriers that we don't always realise that are there until maybe later on. And the last one is obviously access to training schemes and equipment because, uh, uh, as we know, cameras, editing software and laptops, they, they are expensive. So um, I'm going to speak now about how I aim to overcome some of those barriers. And um, I always remember a quote from one of my professors when I was studying um, journalism, and they said a good journalist is only as good as their contact book. And this will be like the main message I'm going to get across in this presentation, whether you're into documentary making, script writing, um, narrative filmmaking, it's really all about how you utilize, find and nurture your contacts. Um, networking and having contacts is the most crucial thing and it is really how I got to where I was and you will see that very shortly with um, what I'm um, about to to explain. So, and so with myself, I, as I said earlier, I wanted to ensure that what I followed and what I re was reporting on had a moral purpose, a moral purpose. So I covered a lot of local news stories here in, in the East Midlands. A lot of them focus, as I said, on migration, um, asylum seekers, homelessness, poverty, people on welfare, poverty, um, domestic violence. I, I, I covered those stories. I tried to get unique access to um, people. What I did was every person I met, I kept a, a notebook or a contact in my phone of every single person I met and kept in touch with them. And I did follow up stories. Um, and thankfully through somebody I met, um, they inspired my documentary and a script I'm writing. So this is why there's lots of cross um, references here of um, just how important maintaining your con contacts are. Um, and then you never know who you're going to meet next. So I, I was, doing a local news report um, uh, following a local firefighter who'd just come back from volunteering at sea in Greece um, to save refugees who were coming over from Turkey and entering Greece. He resuscitated a 10 month old baby and he was local to me. Um, I did an interview with him and then I realized this, there was, he was such a good talker, he's a great character. There was so much going on that wasn't being covered 
um, on the central Mediterranean. This was about 2016. And I said, how can I go out and cover this story? So I kept in contact with this firefighter and I said, when you're not next going out to sea, please let me know and I will come with you. And I want to follow this story. I'd love to make a documentary about these people because with this firefighter, he took all of his annual leave off work and went to save refugees. And I just thought that was fascinating. Um, and then um, I, I decided that my angle for me would be um, following everyday people. So how, how did I come up with my documentary idea? Um, Coming, coming up with the idea is probably the hardest thing. I think even with script writing, if you're a fiction, if you, if you do short films or documentary, you, your idea might be because you find one main character, it might be you have a good title or a good film poster. There's so many, you know, have how an idea emerges. For me, um, it came through meeting the firefighter, one character, and then everything kind of snowballed from there. And I made the focus of my documentary, which I called the movement because there was a whole movement of people and it's a lot more popular now. But back when I was filming, it was like small um, organizations, individuals. And I decided to follow people who were going out saving refugees. And we did land, um, we did air and we did um, sea. Um, and, and then I went to board the, um, the sea watch ship. I was out at sea where they rescued refugees for about four weeks. And um, I then met, made a huge network of people who said, oh, you should interview these people. Um, this person's doing great things. And as I said, I was keeping a note of, of everybody. Um, and then I came up with a loose structure of my film. I split it into four parts. So we did sea, land, air, and then the final bit was a collective solution. Um, I think just, um, I'm just gonna show a clip of my trailer, which will be clip one, just so you have a bit of an idea. The film is on Amazon if you did want to watch it, but. If we can play clip one, that would be great. We're currently uh, in a what would, would perhaps call a search and rescue zone. It's an area that's just north of uh, just north of Libya, about 24 miles north of Libya. I've been a firefighter for 14 years, and I was also a medic in the British Army, so I knew that. If I, if I could be here and somebody was in distress, I could maybe do something about it. We've got one, two, three, four, five in this area, but the police are over there, and generally that's, I mean, they won't last the night there. Moving, moving, moving is the only thing that's kept them bloody alive. The plane is a very strategic asset. We also see stuff we're maybe not supposed to see. What we are seeing at the moment is the civil fleet completely left alone by the European Union. There were military vessels deployed previously to, to deal with this, but where are they now? Where are they? Where's Frontex? Look, the Mediterranean Sea is two and a half million square kilometers large. It is impossible to guarantee full safety at sea. <laughs> Without the grassroots response, there would have been thousands of li more lives lost. I like the football. You know, before they may not even speak to each other in camps and, and, and in their environment, they get onto the football pitch, they become friends, they become a family, and then that goes back to the camp, and that's amazing. Kidnappers came and kidnapped me, and they was beating me, and they was recording, they was sending to my family. Anybody can attack you, can sell you, can harm you. If they are ladies, they can be raped. So when I was in Libya, I saw ladies being raped by the smugglers. But the situation in Libya is, I speak to the people on this boat and I've seen their scars and I've seen the way that they cry when they mention it. They want to rape me, you understand? There's guys there that are, that are actively pursuing these children to sell them to prostitution. This is a 24-hour thing, seven days a week thing. They don't get a break, so we don't get a break. I'll be doing this probably the rest of, probably the rest of my life. And this is the tip of the iceberg. I don't think people really understand this. It's the tip of the iceberg and the situation is gonna get worse and worse. That's 
director trailer from um, my first film. We did go back and do another shorter trailer, but I thought I'd show you that just to um, show you like some of the characters because I'm going to speak a little bit about access. Um, I'm going to just talk about how I pitched the film to distributors because I think this is really important. And I think this is sometimes where um, as emerging filmmakers, we can get stuck. So we have an idea, we have a script, we have a short film, we have a short form doc, whatever. How do we actually get it out there? So this is, this is I'm going to... Uh, give you some practical tips later but I'm just going to show you how I did it. So I um, initially um, approached a few production houses and TV stations that linked to my idea so I did a lot of research to production um, companies who would probably like something like this, a human interest story. Um, then I got a, a, quite a few TV channels get back to me. A lot of them um, had um, conditions that um, they would you know, we, we can we follow the fireman and his children, that kind of thing. That was um, Channel 4, and, and um, we were a bit sceptical about that. Um, and then when I went back and looked over some of the footage, it was actually quite cinematic, some of the, the footage we had at sea. Um, so I, um, I, I pitched to a few independent cinemas. I, I had a contact that I made through my old job at, uh, as a reporter who... Um, um, buys films for um, multiplex cinemas in, in the UK um, and I pitched the trailer there and um, yeah and they decided to, to, to take it fortunately and it got a national release um, and um, what I did was pitch it um, to independent cinemas uh, with a panel, a Q&A panel, I'm going to talk about that briefly but if I just go to the slide I think um, there's a slide I've got with the poster and the BBFC uh, um, um, certification. I'm not sure if we can get that slide up, but um, if we can, um, yes, there we go. So um, that was just the the, the trailer. Uh, sorry, the poster that we 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 had for the national screenings. Um, if we go to the next slide, we got um, some PR. So there was quite a lot of interviews. I've got them at the end of this of these slides, and I'm happy to send these slides to everybody. And this with the Guardian review. Um, now I'm briefly just going to um, go on to the next slide. Um, I'm just going to show you a very simple camera kit. This is my streamline kit. Um, and this is something I've used to, to with um, short fiction films, but also my documentary. So a, a lightweight uh, tripod, stabilizer. Um, I think Rode video mics are great. So I use Rode video mics and some lapel mics. Um, batteries and chargers of camera I use because as I said earlier it's very uh, you know getting camera kit or renting camera kit is very expensive so if you invest in a good camera um, you know you, you could have it for a number of years and film multiple um, projects on it so I use a Sony A7S II I think the S3 is out obviously hard drive GoPro and, and lenses so I just thought I'd, I'd share that because you know there is you can have so much so much kit but this is like enough um, to film, um, you know, uh, a short project or a documentary. And this is the kit that I took out to see on the Sea ship. So I'm just very briefly going to talk about research and getting interviewees on board. This is mainly for um, documentary and non-fiction projects, but um, and then I'm going to talk about script writing. Um, but getting interviews on board, the main thing I would say is do your research. Um, because once you do your research, it shows that you're passion, you're passionate, and it also shows your authenticity. So know your topic before pitching. Um, for me, for the movement, I contacted organisations. I contacted the UNHCR. As you saw in that trailer, I had to get the other side. So I contacted the Border Force, which was Frontex based in Warsaw. Um, I got a lot of quotes and statistics, and then I decided to go out there um, meet people, as I said, I, I, you know, get a coffee with them, sit with them, get their stories. And just by talking to people, you can um, show your passion and get people to, to you know, to, to say yes. Um, and don't be afraid to name drop. I name drop when I was doing the refugee project. I said, oh, you know, I've got this person talking to me. I've got this organisation on board. And, you know, that does open a, a, a lot of doors. Um, and also um, be genuine, like be be the person you are, the filmmaker, the creative that you want to be. Um, a lot of um, press officers, um, et cetera, can be very suspicious to journalists. But um, for me, I would always say trust your judgment and put your suspicions to one side. Um, if it wasn't for good journalists and good documentary makers, for example, we wouldn't know about um, such scandals like 
um, you know, like what happened with Jimmy Savile, the Vatican abuse of children, Windrush, for example. So, um, you know, there is always a, a moral purpose. And I think sometimes it is difficult as filmmakers to um, remember that. Um, and uh, get, getting interview interviewees on board, especially vulnerable people, is, um, is very, very difficult. So how did I get vulnerable people to speak to me? So I think you probably saw in the clip, there was some um, very distressed people who'd just been rescued from sea. Some of them who'd seen family members pass away. Some of them were very young children. Um, and I think you always have to give people time. And, but as I said, being authentic and being genuine does really get you a long way. Um, so I gave people time and I um, I went and had a very chat with, um, a brief chat with people. I didn't go with a camera and put it in people's faces. I had to talk to people and said, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to cover these stories. I'm trying to cover all this, this angle that hasn't really been done before, showing the volunteers. And um, once I explained to people, sometimes I had to use an interpreter that was on the ship. Uh, a lot of people were really happy and wanted to come on board and be part of the film. Um, and do, people do feed off your empathy and they do see when someone is genuine and genuinely cares about a project. Um, I'm just going to very briefly show, just for time, I'm just going to show like a minute of um, the opening of my showreel. The showreel is on YouTube, but um, I've got uh, access to, I'm just, this is how you can get access um, to unique characters. And this was a, a four-year-old Syrian girl from a BBC report I did. Um, I think we might have clip two if that is ready. My name's Misa and I'm six years old. I go to school in Visa, Nottingham. In my country, the children often can't go to school. It's too dangerous because of the war. These are my friends. This is Gabriella, this is Leila, and this is Erica. Hello! I like to teach my friends about my country. Where do you come from, Misa? Um, I come from Syria. So, Misa comes from Syria. I've put a post-it note on where it is, and we're going to pass the globe around so that we can all see where it is. I just wanted to show, um, yeah, so that was me sitting down with a family. Uh, meeting them twice before they you know allowed me to film and film their daughter so I do think if you take time and whether this is with um, characters for a short film you know a makeup artist a cinematographer you want to use if you meet people and network um, it can be very 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 beneficial for you and your project and for having like make lifelong contacts I'm going to go more into detail about that shortly when I talk about regional hubs and funders um, I'm just going to give you some quick tips about editing a teaser and a trailer. This is for documentaries or for um, narrative fiction, short or features. Um, obviously, as you probably know, and you might have made some already, your, your teasers and your trailers are very important. It can open and cl close doors very quickly. So um, it needs to be polished in a way, but um, and, and quite pacey, but you can do this on your phone. You don't need expensive equipment. Um, as long as it's it, it's pacey and you show your best characters first. Um, for me, I use Adobe Premiere. Um, now getting um, editing software is expensive. I would utilize YouTube because going on classes is very expensive. They can be 300 and 400 pounds a class. Um, but I'm going to give you some tips um, shortly about some hubs where you can get this advice, but some of them are very expensive. You can utilize YouTube clips for um, so much advice. Um, recently, I was doing a, an, an edit and I forgot I forgot how to do something on Premiere and I went to YouTube and there was like a two minute video and it was just so helpful. And I think sometimes we forget because it is a bit of a minefield. Um, but there's so much, so many good resources there out there um, on the Internet. Um, with a trailer, a clear um, for my documentaries, a clear message needs to come across. So always start with your best content, your best shot, your best character first. Um, there are funds out there. I've got a list um, of, at the back of this, um, at the end of this project, but I'm going to share this with whoever would like it. Um, so the Catapult Fund, for example, they assist with trailer development. 
um, even if you haven't filmed anything, but you've just got an idea and a very brief team in place, um, they will give you funding just to make a trailer. Um, keep it to about two, no more than two and a half minutes. You can also make use of royalty free music. Um, music bed is a great one. I used them for my first, uh, for that first clip you saw. And then I went on and found a composer to do an original score, but music bed is great. Um, and then get the help of friends. So as I said, the movement score um, was helped um, by a colleague and someone who was recommended to me. Um, I'm just going to show you, uh, I'm just going to now talk briefly about, sorry, um, getting your film out there, a little bit about distribution. Now this is for both fiction and documentary. Now um, I call this, this, this is the hard part, okay? Where is, what is your film? Where is it gonna go? Is it cinema? Is it TV? Is it VOD? Or is it all of the above? Now, um, for me, I, I was interested in hybrid distribution. Now, I decided that um, my film was predominantly for cinema, but um, I really wanted to get onto the, the, the VOD market because my film had a bit of an international appeal. There was people I met in Greece, who I met in France, in Poland, et cetera, who wanted to see the film. So um, it got the theatrical release, which opened a lot of doors and we got PR from that. Um, and then I decided to put it on um, Vimeo On Demand. So I think, I'm not sure if people have used Vimeo On Demand, but you can put it up there and then you, you can charge, or you can charge 50p, you can charge two pounds, um, et cetera. Um, you know, make, make, make some money from it. But then I decided just to um, blind email people and I've got a pitch email I'm going to show you shortly, um, just to test it and see if we could get it um, um, out there. And, uh, you know, fortunately, we, 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 we did manage to get it on onto Amazon Prime um, and then made that free. So it was accessible. And then if people didn't have Amazon Prime, they could pay. And it was a very, very small amount um, of money. Um, a really good tip what I did is uh, because it is such a minefield and it's so much work, especially if you're doing it on your own with a very small team. I put about 30 minutes aside a day to find um appropriate producers, um, independent cinemas. And I um, made a list and I emailed a couple a day because I think it, you can get so bogged down in um, cold emailing people and then just forgetting who you emailed. And I, and I kept a list um, and then gently reminded people if they didn't um, um, get back to me. Um, I networked, I attended film festivals, cinema clubs. I joined my local BFI regional hub and I've done a course there I'm going to speak about that briefly um, the BFI regional hubs also have funding streams they have development and and, and uh, help to exhibit your film so they have a if you have an idea for a script and you haven't written it yet um, you can access development funds you can apply I think you get about um, up to two thousand pounds I think it is to help um, get a right treatment for your script um, um, how I also got my thumb out there on social media. As I said, I contacted the UNHCR Amnesty International. The UNHCR ended up being in the film. I've got a spokesperson and they tweeted it and they shared it with like millions of people on their own Twitter. So just um, talking to um, big charities or big, um, even if you've got a narrative film, but it links to a certain um, ethos or a certain um, company, you can get them to help you to retweet it. And that did a lot for my film. Um, I'm, I can't get the uh, website up at the moment, but um, if you Google a film called Dispossession, it's about the social housing swindle. That is a great example of hybrid distribution where you have um, online, you have cinema and you have DVDs where you could actually um, put DVDs out there as well. Um, and on um, there's also self-distribution via Facebook. So you can have a Facebook group um, so this is what I'm going to do for my second film and you lead up to a big um, premiere. So whether you want to put your film on Vimeo On Demand or if you you can do um, Amazon Video Direct. So if you if you have um, captions for your film, you can go to Amazon Video Direct where you can um, pitch a film to have your film on Amazon, whether that's a short film, documentary. Um, and um, um, what, what we're doing with my second film, we've got a, a, a group uh, that we're going to put on Facebook and we're going to um, say like, you know, next month and then 30 days and then 20 days and we're 
we only put lots of content up so we get lots of people involved um, and hopefully a lot of people when it goes on online and purchasing the film and watching it. Um, I've just got a, I think I've got a slide coming up to show you. Just an example of my films with this hybrid distribution. So it's this cinema, an independent cinema um, and uh, a multiplex. I'm not sure if we've got that slide, the hybrid distribution slide. Um, and with independent cinemas, I pitch to them. Um, so my film this uh, on this slide, I think it's coming up shortly. Um, it was the Watershed Cinema in Bristol. And then we did a cinema in Wales. We did Broadway, Nottingham. We did most of the big independent cinemas in the UK. Um, and we um, managed to pitch it with a panel. So um, we had myself and we had um, one of the refugees in the film. And we also had um, someone from a local charity. So when we were in Bristol, for example, we had someone from a local refugee charity. And that just made it not just about a film, but also about a social justice topic. Like, how can I get more involved? Because my film was more of a, this, my first film was a passion project. I'm very fortunate I got distribution, but it, it was a passion project because I wanted to show people that you can do something to help. So with this film, it, we, we, we um, hopefully managed to get our message across us as well. I think we've got the next slide, which is just, just is the Amazon, and that showed how we how eventually we got it on Amazon. And, and last year, it, no, not last year, it's 20, 2021, it went on to Freeview. So that was like the final hurdle. We got it on Freeview. And it's it's like steps that you take <laughs> to get your film out there. Um, but I would never have done it without nurturing my my contacts. Um, I'm not sure if we have this slide, but I'm going to speak very um the next five ten minutes is about script writing and securing an agent before I go on to talk about my second film um now um I always think as a creative I'm um it's uh, as I I'm mainly focused on documentary um at the moment but I also write and um when I was writing my scripts um I didn't know how to get an agent um and I was writing to agents and wasn't getting anything back so I, I kind of streamlined what I was doing I had a look and I said like, how do you actually pitch to an agent so I got the first 10 minutes of my uh, 10 pages of my script my script is a fiction loosely based some of uh, a real refugee character that I met from uh, a Kurdish refugee a female um, and I went um, and did some research and I found a list that there are some agents that you can pitch to who aren't on recommendation. They open their doors a few times a year to allow young creatives or emerging artists to pitch to them. So um, I pitched to a few. I submitted my idea to BBC Writers Room. I don't know if any of you do that, but twice a year they have BBC Writers Room script room. And I, um, I, I pitched um, my script and it got to the last read, which I which emailed me and said that that was, that this is like the last top 8%. So I knew that the script had legs and I could, you know, hopefully do something with it. Um, I managed to get a, 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 a blind read from McFarlane Chard Associates. They're based in London and Ireland. They represent writers and also actors. And they also rent, uh, sorry, excuse me, represent Saw Sharonan and Barry Keown. Um, they requested a read. I did a redraft, I took their advice on board. I think sometimes as creators, especially emerging creators, when you receive criticism, it's like, oh no, everyone hates my work. I'm never gonna get anywhere, but take criticism on board. It can sometimes like, save your reputation and save your project. I listened to them, I did a redraft. Um, and they met with me in London and then they signed me, which has been brilliant. It was actually my agent who said, um, why don't you think about making a documentary while we're pitching and circulating your script? And that's kind of where that came from. Uh, my documentary idea um, also came from. I think I have a, a slide here, which I can show you. This is a example of a real email I sent with the log line. Um, just a tip, never, I think there's slides coming up. And um, don't write your synopsis, don't send them your whole script in the email body, people won't read it. Um, I think sometimes you feel that you want to tell, if you tell, the more you tell people, the more you tell producers, the more they'll want your project. But sometimes because they're so busy, the more you write, the less they'll read, um, which I found the hard way because I can waffle when I'm emailing. So I, with this one, I kept it uh, uh, very short and sweet. So I put, here's a opening line, here's the um, log line. 
if it sparks any interest, I can send you the one sheet and the script. I didn't send them the script because I think if you send a script and people see that, they're just going to get overwhelmed and think, well, I'm not going to read. So if you send a short email like that, and that's the email, uh, what an example of the email that I sent to um, um, the agent who then came back and requested a read. Um, I'm just going to, um, to kind of end with, um, so that's like 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to speak a little bit about my second film um, and, set, and show you a pitch email for that as well um, and how I pitch to producers. Um, my second film is, is completely different. So um, I'm, work, I'm work, working on a short narrative, but I'm also working on a second documentary. Um, here's a pitch email for you to have a look at. So, um, so just... Filming the movement was extremely distressing. It was, um, ed and I edited, I edited it as well. Um, obviously, pictures of people drowning and homeless refugees in Paris, for, for example, was quite distressing and I had to relive it when I was editing. So I, um, I, I decided to focus on becoming a little bit lighthearted. So again, this is where contacts, contacts, contacts always, you, uh, you know, can, can help you out. When I was a reporter, I did a report on a local guinea pig rescue center. I love animals, I also have guinea pigs. And um, the report just went viral. My editor said to me when I went into work the next day, there's people watching this in the Philippines and India. And I was just like, oh wow, well, no, this is crazy. So I was like, okay, there's something here about you know guinea pigs. Um, and then after I did the movement, uh, I was just thinking I want to do something lighthearted now, but also, a bit hard hitting, but you know, I would like to do something animal based. So, um, as I said, what I said earlier was, I I went went contact the RSPCA, the Blue Cross. I asked the local guinea pig rescue, would you be interested in coming on board and being part of the first major documentary about the guinea pig? And she was like, yes, I would. So we went and filmed. Um, we could show you the beginning of the trailer shortly. I think very very briefly. Um, I, I've recently come back from Peru where I've. Uh, where I, I got access um, and filmed there. Um, unfortunately, this started at the beginning of the pandemic and then I had to put filming on hold. I'm sure a lot of you might have had projects that you were working on or had ideas for that you couldn't do. It was very frustrating, but we've um, got back up and running now and almost finished. Um, I think um, we can probably, let me just have a look how much I've got probably maybe watch if, if we've got time at the end I'll show you the first minute of the um of my second film but I think we're going to put it in the chat box so you can watch it later it's called the keepers of the pigs um so what I did was once I I, I took a very I did a very kind of um a brief trailer a brief clip with the guinea pig rescue woman I said there's never been a documentary about guinea pigs and I just started pitching it um it's easier once you've got your first film out there or um a project under your belt to get more people to listen to you and maybe take you seriously um and then I managed to um get a distributor on board who um does fiction and documentary and they've or they're already pitching it um to secure some pre-sales so pre-sales will give you some money so you can start working on the post-production um and unfortunately we managed to get that I'm just going to show you, just because of time, I'm going to show you an example of a pitch email here for a documentary. Um, I think we can get that up in a minute and I might be able to show you just the beginning of it. Um, the pitch email from the documentary slide, if we've got that. Um, it's quite similar to the screenplay um, pitch where I kept it short and sweet, but this time I added links. So I've put hope you well. Now this is actually a, an, a, a real email to um the documentary lead at Netflix <clears throat> and um this is a game where I've tried to utilize contacts I went to a webinar like this um called so you want to make documentaries and um it was Kate Townsend from Netflix and I pitched this email and again I did the log line two two clips and I said I understand you're very busy um, but um, I'll leave it there and I'll look forward to you if it interests you. Um, and, and I did hear back from Kate and I pitched the second part when I've come back from Peru to her recently. So if if they if you do go to a webinar and they say, feel free to email me, then do email them, okay? Because they've said that, they've opened that door for you and I did do it. Um, um, I think I'm going to show a, a list now of some helpful contacts here. A lot of these are for documentaries. 
but um, I've also got a list for narrative fiction. If anyone likes that, they can email me at the end. So um, I, I can send this to anyone separately who wants it. Um, but this is so these are some that I've applied to. So the catapult and the fledgling flund, um, chicken and egg pictures flies connective these are very very helpful um contacts I'm not everybody knows about some of these this is a kind of a lot of research I've done um the Netflix documentary fund is actually live now it's for a short documentary for eight minutes me and um, uh, uh, someone I've networked with I've pitched a, a documentary um to that um so that that's still up and live um I think the next slide I'm just going to talk to you about some regional hubs and some other schemes before we take some questions um, so obviously a lot of you probably already know about the BFI Academy, but if I was an emerging filmmaker, I would have signed up to this in a heartbeat. So you can do a short course, specialist course, um, and then you can receive BAFTA mentoring. I just think this is amazing. And there's, it's also regional. So it's not just in London and you can get bursaries for some of the specialist courses. Um, but they, they, I mean, they're, they're one of the BFI, um, training academies happens in Nottingham in my hometown. Um, you have to be a young filmmaker and have an interest in it, um, but they happen all over the country. And I just think it's just an, such an incredible um, thing. BFI Network, I'm a part of my local BFI group. It happens at Broadway Cinema in Nottingham. I, um, I, I applied to the Screenwriting Lab and I went on that. It was actually during lockdown and um, I made a contact there and we're thinking about um, developing a short film project. So again, contacts, a lot of things are online now. Um, um, a lot of I'm also a full BAFTA member and a lot of BAFTA events happened in person and I think a lot of people have been writing to BAFTA to say what about us people not based in London and they're doing a lot of networking events online now where you can break off into rooms and actually meet producers meet cinematographers meet makeup artists and editors and um, it's just brilliant I, I would I would just say network 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 as much as you can and meet people and because you never know who is going to help you and who who can help you get your project out there and who can really push, um, you know, and, and support you as well. Um, BBC Writers Room, as, as I pitched my film to that, even though I didn't, my, my film hasn't been successful, I can I write two agents to say, but it did get to the last read. Um, film and TV charity, obviously we do forget about mental health and they offer mental health support and also funding grants. Um, if, if you happen to be a young parent as well, Raising Film supports parents who are filmmakers. The Directors Charitable Association as well um, offers grants. So if you're someone who, um, who you're a director, but you can't travel or you need money to travel, um, then. Um, so I've got a list, a, a longer list, which I'm happy to send to people. Um, if you want to contact me, I'm going to put my contact at the end of this um, presentation. I'm just going to very, for the last couple of minutes before we take questions, just give you some tips about persevering because this is such a tough industry and it is really difficult and I have got so many rejection emails I could actually put them all over my walls I've had so many rejections and rejections it depends how you take them you can take rejection and say this isn't for me I'm going to do something else or you can take it and think okay I think I'm I, I still have a place here I think I am passionate I have a voice and um, use that rejection, use the criticism constructively and, and make that your motivation. So um, I always try to remain focused and, and, and don't give up and use rejection as a, as a purpose to push me further um, and keep your expectations high and your goals high Don't um, because you will get somewhere eventually. Um, I think I've said this about a billion times this presentation, but use your free time as much as you can to network and establish contacts. So what you're doing right now being at the BFI Academy, whether you're in person or online, is a perfect example. Like, stay in network with people. Tell them what your idea is. I'm working on a short script. I'm working on this, this. You know, and you might get you might get someone who you want to team up with, which is actually what I've um, managed to get out of being on, on the local BFI group. We've got a WhatsApp group now, and it's just been so helpful. Don't afraid. Uh, don't be afraid to cold email people. I did it when I was looking for an agent, but I researched who was looking for. Um, who had open door policies and not just for people who were on recommendation with won awards, et cetera. Um, and as I said, like 90% of criticism is constructive. It's just how you take it on board. Um, practice, practice, practice. Um, one of my favorite quotes is from James Cameron, who isn't really one of my favorite directors, but I love this quote. And the quote is, pick up a camera, shoot something, no matter how small, no matter how cheesy, no matter whether your friends or sister star on it, put your name on it, 
now you're a director and that is you know something that that people just shouldn't forget if you're writing and reading scripts continue to read scripts and write and put a time aside to do a few pages a day um i think we are coming to the end it just goes so fast i have a lot more to share but i'm um i'm going to open it to questions shortly i'm I'm going to put my contact up if, if you have the contact slide, which has my socials and also my email. And I'm really happy to give people some more tips and a list of my funders um, and some contacts if you want them. Um, um, there we go. Um, I did have a clip of what of, of a project, a, a Windrush project that I worked on recently that aired last year on TV, but I don't have time to share it. <laughs> So if anybody would like to see any of that, just contact me and I'll, I'll tell you where you can see it. So I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, such an insightful and inspiring chat so far. So thank you so much. Um, we've had loads of questions coming through, so we're going to try and get through as many as we can. Um, we're going to start with... Um, this, this, this came up actually earlier in another discussion about um, opportunities with distributors. Um, how do you find opportunities to pitch to distributors um, and how difficult is it trying to find success there? Um, do you um, develop these relationships via networking, online applications, events? Um, what would your advice be? Um, a bit of both. Now, because I'm regionally based, I don't, I don't have, there wasn't many networking opportunities um, I could go to uh, apart from the BFI hub and then there was a local film club. So a lot of it was me sitting down, which is why I wrote, uh, I said earlier in the presentation, if you can put 30 minutes a day, minutes, minutes, um, a day down just to research. So I just kind of went online and I looked at distributors who spoke to me. So what am I filming? What is my message? And for me, it was human interest, refugees for my first film. Second film, it was wildlife, um, animals, fun pieces. Um, so I, I looked at what was, um, what distributors would, um, take work like from me and um, a lot of it was um either going via my agent or contacting them directly with a very brief email which is why i shared those emails because a very brief short and sweet email can um you know really 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 open doors for you so it was it was me a lot of it for me the distributor was me actually going to them um but the this the the film um the movement which got the, the the theatrical release which came first then it went to online then it went to tv the theatrical release was be was because i sat and spoke to somebody who came into my my workplace who happened to work in cinema distribution and as i said i kept the contact um i'm still friends with that contact but it's just um just never like, if you can take anything from this presentation it is um networking and um um, utilizing every contact not using utilizing every contact and getting advice um so yeah that was it for me with distribution and then i, I self-distributed so i used v uh, vimeo on demand and then i thought no let's try the amazon route i think this is a good space for amazon because of the i had so many people contacting me wanted to see the movement who missed it at the cinema and then i i basically explained that to to amazon so yeah i think a lot of it was me being a one-woman band <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, knocking on doors, really. Great stuff. Um, this has come through from Lizzie, which is, I'm sure a lot of people on this call might have this, um, the, the same question. Um, how do you find not living in London as a filmmaker? And how often do you find yourself traveling or having to turn down opportunities? That's a really, really good question. In fact, the other day I saw something on the BAFTA networking and it was in person. I'm like, that would be amazing and I can't go. Uh, quite a lot actually now as I said at, at the start I didn't want it to be like kind of doom and gloom like oh there, there's nothing as I mentioned there's the BFI regional hubs there's so many local regional hubs um I've actually got a list but I just didn't have time to cover it so please do email me um but um, I, um it's getting so much better so um I think maybe a lot of it is realizing that there are groups that just don't live in London who or, or who aren't in Manchester for example who are creatives um, and that there are um, schemes that you can access, but a lot of them do be going to London. I turned down an opportunity um, to, to, to do a scheme because um, whether there was a birth, this was a long time ago, there was a bursary that helped you on the scheme, but about living costs, 
what about buying food in London? We all know even living in London and working in London is expensive. So there, there is a lot. And I think there's a lot more that um, a lot of companies uh, and um, agents can do to make that more accessible. Um, but I, what I would encourage people to do is that if you if you do see a scheme you like or you are a member, um, because I started with BAFTA Crew, which was very emerging talent. And then, then there's BAFTA Connect. And then I went to straight BAFTA member because I had a couple more projects under my belt. But when I was with BAFTA, um, BAFTA Crew, we had a, um, a group. So we, we had the, the main group. Then we broke off to the regional group so that we had a little East Midlands group. And we spoke about this all the time. We're like, so we made our own little group um, and where we're, we, we can meet and then talk about films. And I think if anyone hasn't um, looked at BAFTA as well, the BAFTA Connect, if you're eligible, I would look into BAFTA, um, BAFTA Connect. Um, but yeah, sadly, a lot of the events in BAFTA happen at 195 Piccadilly in person and I can't get to them because I'm in Nottingham. I try and come to London about, yeah, probably about once a month. But even then, you know, it's a stretch. So, yeah. Um, but things are getting better and do email me for more regional hubs because I do have a lot more to share. <laughs> oh yeah, for showing back to connect there. Mm -hmm. um, we got another question through from um, Antonis. Um, congratulations on your job and approach. Um, he wants to ask about um, funding and bursaries in order to get started. Do you have any advice on where? Um, film yeah, I mean, I mean, if it, it, it depends what it is. Now with, with, with documentary, um, I, I approach the, the, the catapult fund. It's, it's based in America, but they fund um, internationally. And that is that it's called catapult. It's to catapult you. Um, it's, you don't have to have anything filmed. You don't even have to have a camera. You have to have an idea and some access. You pitch them, you say, this is my idea, this is my log line. It asks you for a creative statement. That's the catapult fund. Um, um, and that 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 is a is a really good one. The other one um, I, I, I would always recommend doing is um, trying to get, it depends what your project is, but trying to get um, help from contacts and friends, but also um, seeing if you can get any, any sponsorship. So um, like, for example, I'm a trustee of a, a group in Nottingham called the Young Creatives. And we utilize sponsorships a lot for um, funding our, our creative awards and our creative um, 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 schemes. So um, another example from my second film, which is um, about animals, uh, specifically about the guinea pig, um, I'm talking to three sponsors at the moment. So I've basically did my research and looked at um, companies that um have like guinea pig hay and guinea pig food and I pitched it to them and say um would you be um interested if um coming on board giving us a little bit of sponsorship money and in return we can talk about your brand and put your logo on so sponsorship's always a good one in terms of um fiction films um if, if for example if you're a script writer I don't if whether it's um long or short form I would really recommend if you are a feature film writer to look at um Phil Shelley, I think it's Phil Shelley, who is the um, script supervisor who can give you some tips. Um, they, um, he is brilliant. They also do a course with Channel 4 every year where you can pitch your script, whether it's a TV, whether it's feature. And um, they pick about 15 people for a development. So if you look at schemes like that, when you can get development money and development expertise, they are brilliant. Um, um, I, I can send people this separately, but um, that's, I think it's called the channel Four. yeah, there we go, <laughs> it's in the chat. Um, and there, there, there are literally so many, um, I don't know if maybe it's possible to go back to that slide, probably not, but there, 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 there are so many, but the best thing you can do is to um, email and, and um, drum up some interest, because once people start talking about you and talking about your project and you get um, your voice out there and your project out there, and then it's a lot easier to attract funders, and I found this a second time around with my second film. Um, and um, just very briefly, I've, I've pitched to, as, as I, I've shared it earlier, it's still actually open, I think, and I think it might close today, the Netflix documentary fund. Um, I pitched a short idea um, and they, they give, um, I think, £30,000 to a very small team to make an eight minute film. So I think a lot of it is like um, looking what's out there. And if you're part of BFI Regional Hub, um, they send you a newsletter every um every week or is it every two weeks and they've got a list as well of funders so um for my my script i'm working on when i showed everybody the um 
example email earlier, the one with the um, the Kurdish rebel fighter. I'm rewriting that now with a lot of advice I've had on board and writing it about the channel crossings. Um, um, and focus it on her and three other characters. And I'm pitching that for BFI development funds. So if you go to your local BFI regional hub, um, they have a development fund. It opens and closes, I think, a couple of times a year. And I think you can apply up to a couple of, it's either a thousand or two thousand to double check that. Um, and that's just to help you get your idea, go and research. So if I want to go to London and speak to a refugee group, I can put that in my budget, which I'm actually I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> um, and um, it'll help you to write a pitch deck. And I've got an example pitch deck. I couldn't put it in this presentation because it's so long. But if, if anyone wants to see an example pitch deck, um, just email me. And it's got pictures in it, it's short and sweet, it's got the log line synopsis and a creative statement. And I'm happy to share that with people because sometimes you will be asked for a pitch deck and that can open up money for funding as well. <laughs> oh, wow. An absolute wealth of advice there, um, Sharon. Thank you. so. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. But thank you so much. <laughs> For such an informative session and for being so generous with your advice today. Um, I know a lot of people have been asking about um, links, so I know Harry's yeah. done a really good job trying to follow what you're saying and putting links into the chat. Um, uh, this um, event is being, is being recorded, it's going to be put up on the BFI um, YouTube channel next week, so we'll try and link to as many of those um, resources as we can in the um, in the video description uh, and we'll also try and find a way of sharing your document as well Sharon so yeah um, keep 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 your eyes peeled on the um, BFI YouTube channel.